everyone today we are going to begin with wbeh's famous poem the lake isle of inisfi prescribed in your syllabus i'll first introduce the poet and the poem to you after which i will read and explain the poem line by line along with the difficult words in the end we will discuss the literary devices and the major themes in the poem so let's begin W. B. Yeats was born on thirteenth June, eighteen sixty-five, and he died on twenty-eighth January, nineteen thirty-nine. He was an Irish poet and playwright, born in Dublin, Ireland. Although born in Ireland, he got his education from London. He used to spend his summer holidays in West Ireland, in his home country. A very well-known poet, Yeats won the Nobel Prize for Literature in nineteen twenty-three. Now, let me brief you about the poem. The Lake Isle of Inisfree is one of his most famous and widely anthologized poems. It was written in 1888. In this poem, the poet longingly remembers a place called Inisfree near his birthplace where he used to visit as a child. He also longs for peace and silence, the two things which are absent in his busy city life, and he is seeking these two things when he wants to visit this place in his home country. Now let's move on and read the poem. You can pause the video here and read it by yourself or you can read it along with me. I will arise and go now and go to Innisfree and a small cabin built there of clay and wattles made. Nine bean rows will I have there, a hive for the honey bee and live alone in the bee loud glade. And I shall have some peace there for peace comes dropping slow, dropping from the vales of the morning to where the cricket sings. Their midnights all a glimmer, and noon a purple glow, and evening full of the linnet's wings. I will arise and go now, for always night and day, I hear lake water lapping with low sounds by the shore. While I stand on the roadway or on the pavement's grey, I hear it in the deep heart score. So this was the poem. Let's analyze it stanza wise now. I will arise and go now, and go to in is free. I hear is the poet. He is determined, firm in his decision when he says that he will arise. He will get up now and go to Innisfree. Now, Isle of Innisfree is a small uninhabited island. Uninhabited means nobody lives there. Uninhabited island on the Lake Low Hill in Ireland. The poet wants to go to this small island located near the Lake Low Hill in his country, Ireland, right? And a small cabin built there of clay and wattles made. He wants to build a small cabin there using clay and wattles. Cabin is a small house built with logs of wood. Wattles are the branches or twigs woven together to form a fence. So he wants to build a small cabin with wood on this island of Innisfree near the lake using clay and wattles. Nine bean rows will I have there, a hive for the honey bee. As for the food, the poet says that he will cultivate exactly nine rows of beans. This shows that he wants to grow food enough just for one person. Along with it, he also wants to keep a beehive from where he could collect fresh raw honey. A hive is a structure where the honey bees live. So he wants to collect fresh honey from the beehive. And live alone in the bee loud glade. The poet says that he wants to be surrounded by loud noisy bees while living on the glade. Now glade is an open space on a lake. Right? So he wants to live alone in an open space and he wants to have a beehive to grow his own beans and build a cabin where he could live peacefully. Right? Let's move on to the next stanza now. And I shall have some peace there for peace comes dropping slow. The poet is looking for peace. He hopes that he will find peace there. There in Innisfree, right? He says that peace comes dropping slow. And where does the peace drop from? Dropping from the veils of the morning to where the cricket sings. Now, veil is a sort of a cover used to hide or cover an object. You must have seen women with veils. Here the poet says, veils of the morning. And what does he mean? He means that the morning is like a veil that covers the scenery. It seems that everything is hidden by this misty, foggy veil of the morning. So he says that peace comes dropping from the veils of the morning. He is referring to the quiet, peaceful morning. He also talks about the cricket singing. Cricket is an insect a little smaller than the grasshopper that produces a whizzing sound. So the poet is saying that the cricket continuously sings in this place. Then midnight's all a glimmer and noon a purple glow and evening full of the linnet's wings. There refers to the island of Innisfree again. He says that their midnight is full of a dull light. 
a faint glow a dim light and the afternoon has a purple glow this is a place where the evening is made beautiful by the flocks of the linnet a linnet is a bird that flocks in large groups so here in this stanza the poet is describing what the morning afternoon evenings and midnight will look like on this island of inisfri i will arise and go now for always night and day i hear lake water lapping with low sounds by the shore the poet here repeats his decision to himself again by saying i will arise and go now for means because here because night and day i'll hear lake water lapping lapping means gently striking against something repeatedly with low sounds by the shore now shore here means the land adjoining an ocean or a lake so he says that he will hear the soft noise the soft sound of water gently striking against the lake shore right while i stand on the roadway or on the pavement's gray i hear it in the deep heart score he says that it doesn't matter where he is even if he is standing on the road or on the grave pavement you can look at the picture here of the grave pavement it doesn't matter where he is standing this soft sound will always be there in the deep core the deepest layer of his heart what he means to say is that this place its beauty its sounds and its scenery will always remain deep in his heart forever now that we've read the poem let's discuss its literary aspects But before moving on to the poetic devices let's see the rhyme scheme of the poem. The rhyme scheme is the pattern of rhyming words at the end of each line of the poem. Look at the words at the end of the lines. In is free rhymes with b so we'll quote them as aa. Made rhymes with gla so we'll quote them as bb. Slow rhymes with glow aa. Sings rhymes with wings so bb. Day rhymes with gray so aa. shore rhymes with core so b b you can see the rhyme scheme is the same throughout the poem which is a b a b right now let's move on to the poetic devices the first poetic device is repetition it is the repetition of words or phrases to emphasize upon an idea the first example is the word peace which is repeated twice this means that the poet wants to emphasize that he is looking for peace in this uh, countryside in this island of inisfree right The second example is this phrase I will arise and go now this is repeated twice it also shows that the poet is determined he is very firm in his decision of getting up and leaving the city and going to this isle where he is decided to go right so these are the two examples of repetition the next poetic device is alliteration alliteration is a device where two or more words in the same line of poetry have the same beginning consonant sound let's look at some example hive have honey bee so the her sound is repeated right let's look at another example lake clapping low so the l sound is repeated so these are the two examples in line 3 and line 10 the her sound and l sound are repeated let's look at the third poetic device which is metaphor a metaphor is an implicit hidden or implied comparison between two unrelated things but these things must must share one common quality So there's just one example of metaphor here whales of the morning the morning looks like a whale right so this is the similarity between these two things but it is implied the poet is not saying whales like of the morning whales as the morning this is implied and therefore we say that this is an example of metaphor let's look at personification it is the attribution of human characteristics or emotions to something non human Look at this example cricket sings now we all know that cricket can make a noise but it cannot sing it's a human quality right so this is an example of personification now let's look at the last poetic device which is imagery imagery is the use of vivid and descriptive language to create a mental image in the minds of the reader now the first example is be loud glade these words create an image of loud bees buzzing in your head right lake water lapping you can literally imagine the lake water lapping producing soft sound when it strikes against the shore the next example is midnight's all a glimmer so you can imagine a dull light uh, glowing in the midnight uh, let's look at another example purple glow the afternoon is described as having a pur- purple glow so you can imagine how uh, an afternoon would look purplish these are the two 
examples of imagery in lines 4 and 10 we have auditory imagery because you can imagine the sounds which are being described by these words in line 7 you have visual imagery at two places which help you create a mental picture about how the scenery would look that's why we are calling it a visual imagery right so these were the poetic devices let's move on and discuss the major themes the first theme is nature and natural beauty the poet feels an attraction towards the nature and natural beauty. He wants to go to this place. He wants to experience nature firsthand. He wants everything to be natural. His food, his honey, everything to be natural. He even wants to build his own, own home with his own hands. He longs to go to the countryside, leaving his busy city life behind. He's so tired of his city life. He just wants some peace and quiet. He wants to go and experience this natural beauty. He describes the natural beauty in great detail. We've seen how he, how he describes the midnight, the day, the purple glow and all of the other insects. The next theme is peace and harmony. The poet repeats the word peace to emphasize what he is looking for. Now peace is very important. The one thing that he is missing in his city life is peace and harmony quiet and silence he just wants to live on his own and he just wants insects and animals to be around him uh, he doesn't want any other human being around him so he, he's looking for peace and harmony the third major theme and i think it is very important is identity this place is the place where the poet was born right and he wants to go back to this play, place place he longs for this and this place is a symbol his his longing is a symbol of his true identity because he longs for this place he is waiting to just go back run back to this place it shows that his true nature is uh, that of a nature lover of a quiet person who just cannot adjust in the city he wants to go back to find his true his inner self so these are the major themes in the poem thank you so much